Well, good morning. It's great that you're with us. My name's Wayne. I'm one of the ministers at Cosham Baptist Church. We're on day 14 of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. And friends, if, if you've been joining with us uh, through these 21 days, we're two thirds uh, of the way through. I keep praying for you that you're going to sense um, God's closeness to you. Uh, if you're joining fasting with the prayer, I, I pray that you're going to see God's power released uh, in ways that you haven't seen uh, before. The prayer times that we've been having throughout the week, I have to say, have been a real uh, blessing. I want to say if you haven't joined any of these uh, during this last uh, week, please can I encourage you uh, to join one and just sense God's spirit falling uh, as we meet online, falling upon us and speaking and leading uh, and guiding us. The details for these prayer times uh, are on the screen uh, now and there'll be one this evening uh, at seven o'clock. And you see, the reason for me keep pushing this stuff for you is that I just don't want you to miss out. You know, I just, I just, I just don't want you to miss out on, on all that God uh, is doing. So I want to encourage you to join in and experience the goodness of God uh, in powerful and amazing ways and you know if you haven't been able to join for the last 14 days that's okay just join for the next seven and you know have a seven day prayer and fast that that's okay you know God's not going to hold that against you you know he he just wants you to draw closer to him so I just want to encourage you to to tap in and to join that now for this last seven days today we we're moving into our final week as we think about uh, returning uh, to our mission together and this morning i, I want to speak about what mission as christians actually is but before we do that i thought we'd have some fun this morning i'm just going to read three mission statements from three well-known uh, companies organizations and at home, you know, you can play along at home. You've just got to guess uh, where these come from. So the first one, this is the first mission statement. Uh, where does this come from? To refresh the world, to inspire moments of optimism and happiness, to create value and make a difference. That's a bold statement, isn't it? To, to refresh the world. Do you know where that one comes from? I give you a moment, have a think, talk to if you're with anybody. That comes from Coca-Cola. So next time you, you open a, a, a can of Coke or a, a bottle of Coke or you have a drink or of, of Coca-Cola, whatever it is, just think, you know what? Uh, by, by engaging with them, you know, it's refreshing uh, the world. Who, who's this company? To provide a better everyday life for people and keep the mission alive. So I've, I've read that wrong. I'm going to start again on that one. Uh, this company's mission statement is to provide a better everyday life for people and keeping this mission alive are our everyday employees. The team share the same principle that many should be able to create the home they want and dream of. That might be a little bit easier for you to think of who that one is. That's Ikea. Or actually, I think you say it, Ikea. Uh, Ikea, Ikea, however you say it, um, that's their mission statement. Is it only me that gets completely lost in Ikea and maybe lost in their mission statement as well? And then the final one, our mission is to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. If you have a body, you are an athlete. I have to tell you, I love this one because I've got a body. It means I'm an athlete, according to these. Who do you think said that one? Well, that's Nike, if you were wondering. You know, a week ago in the Saturday uh, prayer time, Simon got us to write uh, um, a declaration for us as families or as individuals. And as a family of four, uh, the Dulsons, we wrote one and it was this. God, we want you to be the centre of this family and we want to go on adventures with you wherever you take us. Do you like that? We love that. And, and, and we, I was, as I was writing this sermon, I thought, well, actually, I could turn that uh, into a Dulson family mission statement by changing the wording and adding some words. So it reads, 
as a family, we want to display that God is right at the center of all that we are. We want to go on adventures with him wherever he takes us so that we experience more of God. And as we do, we show the love of Jesus to those around us and live always in and through his spirit. I love that. We could get it printed up and and put on our wall. We could get merchandise printed for it. We could get baseball caps and t-shirts and hoodies with adventures with God on the front and that mission statement on the back. And you know, I think my kids are at an age I could just about get away with that where they would still wear the t-shirt if we were on holidays they would wear the hoodie Uh, i think in in a year or two i'm probably not going to be able to do that but maybe i'll get them printed maybe you'll when we're all back you'll see us with with t-shirts on that says adventures with god you know a mission statement is what you exist for and today we're thinking about returning to our mission together and throughout this next week we're going to be thinking each day we're going to be thinking about these themes revival for our nation building of our church stepping into what god has for us reaching our sphere of influence salvation for our generation and fighting for our families all brilliant themes that we're gonna be praying and fasting over this week. But this morning, I want us to think more broadly than that as we think about what is our mission? You see, it's easy to forget, isn't it, why we exist. It's easy to lose sight uh, of what it is we're called to. And I think in this pandemic season, when we do all we can to simply survive, we can quickly forget what our mission is. The mission statement we spoke about for Nike, other sports where manufacturers are available, speaks to the heart of athletes, you know, and and many athletes would have a mission statement that's focused on being the best, on, on winning every race, on getting that gold medal at the Olympics. And to achieve that, they have to be focused, They're not just on the gear they wear, you know, but on their training regime, their diet, uh, their sleep patterns, their family and social life. It, it becomes everything to them. It, it directs their mission statement on winning, directs not only where they are going, but it says who they are and it impacts every area of their lives. And I'm sure there are times when it's chucking it down the rain and it's cold and it's dark and they don't want to go out on train when all they want is some junk food and they're fed up of counting the calories and and weighing out how much protein they have it all seems so boring and i'm sure it's in those moments that they go back to why they exist what their mission statement is and that motivates them to keep going And this prayer and fasting that we're doing together as a church under the big theme of returning to God is just that it's it's seeking to return to to what we are, to, to whose we are and what he has called us to. And so this week we return to our mission together. And, you know, maybe you've lost sight of what your mission is. Maybe as a church we've lost sight of what our mission is and so today and this week we're looking to refine that to return uh, to what that is so let's have a think about what our mission is by looking at what peter says about this in 1 peter uh, chapter 2. we read you are coming to christ who is the living cornerstone of god's temple he was rejected by people but he was chosen by god for great honor And you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What's more, you are his holy priests. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. Friends, you, me, us, we are living stones. Peter is talking about Jesus being the cornerstone of the church and he's telling us, he's reminding us that that we are the church. God is entrusting uh, the message to us to be the church, to share this message with the world. Wow, friends, that's amazing, isn't it? Let's return to that, shall we? And we read on, as the scriptures say, I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chosen for great honour, and anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Yes, you who trust him recognise the honour God has given him. 
But for those who reject him, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And he is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they do not obey God's word. And so they meet the fate that was planned for them. Peter is, is quoting Isaiah chapter 8 here. And he's saying that if you reject Jesus, your life is going to face consequences because your life is not going to be all that it could be. And you're going to stumble over the things of the world. And so I'm telling you, he says, you better believe in Jesus. For if you remove the cornerstone, you know, if you remove the cornerstone of a building, everything is going to come tumbling down. He's, he's not being, uh, he's not having a go at them. He's just stating facts here. And it's a warning to us too that we better make Jesus the cornerstone of our lives. Otherwise, things are going to crumble. And Peter goes on and the following couple of verses are really what I want us to think about today. We read in verse 9, but you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are a royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. Did you know that? Do you know that? Do you know that you're God's? Do you know that you are different to those who have rejected Jesus? Or let me put it another way. Are you living differently to those who have rejected Jesus? Jesus you know there's no messing about here Peter says as a result that is because you're God's because Jesus is the cornerstone of your life as a result you can show others the goodness of God for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light and then Peter quotes Hosea and it's it's through the prophet Hosea that that God revealed that because of his love he was going to redeem his people it's been described that Hosea opens a window for us into the very heart of God. Isn't that great? And Peter quotes that when he says, once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbours. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honourable behaviour and they will give honour to God when he judges the world. You know, as you read these verses, friends, you get a sense that as followers of Jesus, we're meant to be different. We're called to be different. And, and as we live among others, our lives point others uh, to Jesus. Here's the truth. If you are part of a church, you're chosen for a mission. You are God's. If you're following Jesus, you're chosen for a mission. God chooses you for a special assignment. You were once living as those who rejected the cornerstone, as those who rejected Jesus. But now, because you choose to love him, because you choose to live for him, you have a mission. And friends, this mission is very simple. You are to show the goodness of of God. Isn't that great? You know, we read it in, it's in 1 Peter 2 9 where he says, we're God's very own possession. Our, our purpose to be in God's own possession so that we can show the goodness of God to others. God has called you, friends, to be a missionary where you are. I want to stay on these verses for a moment. And I want to look at them in the message paraphrase and then the the and the Passion Translation, as I think they say our mission beautifully. We read verse 9 to 10 in the message, we read, But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. Don't you just love this? It, it makes it very clear. It lays it out in no uh, uncertain terms. We are God's instruments to do his work and to speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he makes in our lives. I love that. Our mission is to tell others how amazing God is. Our mission is to live out how amazing God is. And we live the difference he makes in our lives. And you know, when it says night and day, it means always. It's, it's a 24 hour thing. There's nothing else. You know, when there's night and there's day, there's nothing else. There's not a middle bit. It's night and day. 
it, it, that's all it is. If, if you've gone through a night and a day, you've gone through a day. And so Peter is saying, always, 24 hours a day, live out your mission. You know, live out the difference that God makes in your life, always. And then I want to read these verses, but from the Passion Translation. Now, please, I'm not reading them from different translations uh, just to make up time this morning. I'm, I'm reading them because I just want to allow the Bible in, in its wonderfully different forms to speak to us today. We read, but you are God's chosen treasure, priests who are kings, a spiritual nation, set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvellous light. And now he claims you as his very own. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. For at one time you were not God's people, but now you are. At one time you knew nothing of God's mercy because you hadn't received it, yet now you are drenched with it. Friends, how great is this? Your mission is to broadcast God's glorious wonders throughout the world because you are drenched in God's love and mercy. Let me just, let, let that just sink in to you a moment. You are to broadcast God's glorious wonders throughout the world because you are drenched in God's love and mercy. I, I don't know what that, I don't know about you. I just love that. I just love that. You know, Peter knew this mission was his mission. He also knew that the vehicle that God uses to broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world was the church. And you see, the reason for this theme of returning to our mission together is because I think it is easy to forget why we exist. This has been especially true uh, during the pandemic when we've, we've gone into survival mode, haven't we? You know, I, I don't know about you, but there have been times when I, I feel that as a family of four, we've kind of, we've just hunkered down. It's like we're in a, in a, it's like we're in a secret nuclear bunker. You know, it's just been the four of us, we've been a unit and we've engaged with each other and we've, you know, we've had meals and we've played games and we've, we've laughed and we've talked and we've done all of these things, just the four of us um, together because we've not been allowed to go out. As a church, this season has often been about getting down what we feel needs to get done. How we look after the congregation pastorally. How we, we do, uh, how do we change our current groups so that they can continue? What needs to be done so that our Sunday services can carry on? How best to have our leaders meeting and this meeting and, a, and, and so on and so forth? How can we set up offices at home so that the work can, can still be done? You know, my, my living room was turned into a living room come, come home office, you know. Now, don't get me wrong, no, none of these things are bad. And in one sense, it's right, and, and it's right that we've done that. But it does raise a question. How much time do we spend on us as opposed to sharing Jesus outside of the church? You see, when God gave us his mission it wasn't to build buildings it wasn't to manage bookings to have another church meeting to put in an extra service for for people who like this style or that style of worship to invest loads of our resources in building our house it was simply to broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world and I don't know about you but I'm really challenged by this this week because if I'm honest the, me the majority of my time is taken up by well, how do I sound, say this? Because it's going to sound harsh, but the majority of my time is taken up by, by you. <laughs> it is. It's, it's preparing a service for you. It's, it's preparing a group for, for you. It's preparing a report for, for you. It's having conversations about how as a church we look after you. Now, I know I'm being a bit unfair because there's nothing wrong with that part of my my role as a minister is to to look after you it's to 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 you know to bring teaching to help you pastorally to help the church move forward all of these things and that involves you and that and that's right and proper and it's okay i'm just trying to make a point here it's right you know that the church loves cares is enables each other to grow but that's not our mission those things 
are only worthwhile if they feed in to our mission. You know, as one Christian leader put it, all of those things that we do as church, he called them maintenance. You know, he said, this side of heaven, we have to work on our mission. We have to return to our mission. And this is telling people how much Jesus loves them. It's broadcasting his love to the entire world. That's our mission and all the other stuff that we do, that needs to feed into that. And if we're not doing the mission, all we're doing is maintaining. You know, we need to speak out for God to tell others of the night and day difference he makes in our lives, for that we came from nothing to something from rejected to accepted. And you see, I'm really challenged as to how much the church, how much the, of the stuff that we do is for the church versus how much is actually living out our mission. For mission, telling people about Jesus is something uh, we can't do in heaven. <laughs> Almost all of the stuff we do as church, we can do in heaven, but we cannot share the love of Jesus in our community when we're in heaven. And so we end up, as what as the, the Christian leader that I've just talked about when he said about maintaining, he said, we end up maintaining as opposed to living out our mission. And so where are you at with all of this? You know, are you maintaining as opposed to living out your mission? And as I was preparing, I, I sense that there are some who are watching this today and you, you feel like you've lost your way a little bit. It may be the pandemic or it may be other things in life, but somehow you've forgotten your mission or, or you've lost your mission. It's almost as if you left it somewhere and you can't remember where you left it. I don't mind being honest with you this morning by saying that this week I've struggled. I, I just feel overwhelmed. I've just felt fed up with doing everything online. I've just felt fed up with not being able to, to go anywhere and see friends and family the way I used to. I just feel tired. I feel like I've, I've questioned what is my mission? What am I doing here? Because in one sense, I feel like I've allowed other things to, to push it out. And friends, maybe you, you feel the same. Maybe you can relate to, to some of this and maybe like me, you feel a, a little bit that you need a bit of reminding this morning that, that you're God's and he has tasked you with the awesome mission of broadcasting his love to the world. Amen, church. Let's grab on board with that. Let's jump on to that, that our mission is, is to, to broadcast his love to the world. And, and that is something that, that refreshes us. It re-energizes us when we realize that's what we exist for. We don't exist for all the other stuff. We exist to broadcast his love to the entire world, to our world, where we are. But I also sense that some of you are feeling underqualified to do this. And you know, you need to hear today that there are ways that you can live out, that you can exercise this mission that only you can do. You know, some of you are out there and you're sharing uh, with words, the, the love of Jesus with everyone you meet, you go out for a walk and you tell three people that Jesus loves them, not in a weird way, but, but you just enter into conversation with them and it, it's just who God has made you to be and it naturally comes out about how much Jesus loves them. Some of you bake, you bake amazing cakes and you're sharing the love of Jesus uh, by just taking a cake round to a, a friend or a, a, a neighbour or, or somebody who, who doesn't know Jesus, but you know, they they just need to know that they're loved. And that speaks to them. You know, some of you are generous and you, you give to people. Some of you are quietly doing life with one or two people and you're just having a coffee. You're just uh, going for a walk with them and you have gentle conversations where somehow you don't even know you're doing it, but you bring the love of Jesus into it. You see, I, I want us, us to see that there's not, one, there's not one way to do this, but we're all part of the mission to broadcast the love of Jesus to the world and to your, wor your world, where you live uh, and move. And however it is that God has called you to do that, just do that. Just, and if you don't know what that is, ask him to, to show you those things, to release those things within you so that, so that you, can, you can get involved in the mission that God's called you to do and get involved in the way he's called you to do that. 
But I also sense, uh, as well as feeling overwhelmed and underqualified, some of you just feel you're not good enough. You know, you look at others and you think, yeah, they, they, they're good enough. It's right that they go and share the love of Jesus, but I'm just not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. Let me tell you, just take this away this morning, that because of Jesus, God says you are. Full stop. No, no questions. You are because of Jesus. You are called friends. You are part of the mission of God because he called you out of darkness into his wonderful life. Once you had no identity, but now your identity is in God. And because of that, you get to partake in the mission. This is not about trying to earn uh, something from God. This is letting yourself be loved by God and then simply sharing that with the world. And as we close today, I know I've said a lot today. I, I just want to encourage us to return to God's mission together. It's really exciting to think that we're on mission for God right now, right where we are. So let's move our thinking away from looking inward to thinking and looking outward. You know, friends, let's not get bogged down with spending our time and our energy on keeping the wheels of the church machine oiled just so that it looks nice. Because if we're not broadcasting his love to the world, it's all for nothing. If we're doing it because it's feeding into the mission as we share Jesus in the world, but well, then that's great. But if it's not, well, then let's stop. And let's ask God, what is it that he wants us to do? Let's ask God to show us his new ways of what it means to be the church, to be CBC. And this week and beyond, return to his mission through the whole of life. And together, let's go on adventures with God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that we exist so that we can tell others that you love them. That's it. It's, it's simple. Father, forgive us when we overcomplicate it. Forgive us when we get bogged down with all other stuff that draws us away from the mission of broadcasting your love to the entire world, to our world where we are. Father, as we pray and fast this week, as we think about this thing, Spirit just gently or maybe you need to do it powerfully and, and boldly and loudly. But however, you need to get our attention. Father, just break into our lives this week. May we change ourselves from looking inward to, yeah, to oil in the church machine. To doing only the things that seek to support the mission. To tell people that you love them, that your son died for them, that they can live in the power of your spirit. And start with us, Father, this week and beyond. We want to go on adventures with you. Bless you. Thank you, Father. It's exciting times. Yeah. Amen. Bless you, church. Let's finish this service as we, as we worship together. You may want to stand, you may want to lift your hands, lift your voices as you just call out to God. As you see your eyes opening anew and afresh, that you're part of the mission to share his love with the world. Bless you, church. Bye-bye.